guys, welcome back to the channel. Owning supercars, using them, even to the point of daily driving them is something that I've always tried to promote on this channel. However, unfortunately, practicality sometimes overrules passion. And when you've got a growing family, these things sometimes just don't cut it. So I'm on the lookout for a cheap solution. Follow me and I'll show you why. When you've got little ones, they come with a lot of baggage. We have bikes that get bigger each year. We have scooters. We have family robot projects. Say hi. I have Optimus Prime. Thank you, Optimus. We even had things like telephone boxes that need to be transported around. As you can see, this one is missing some sides simply because I just can't get them here from uh, where they're stored at the moment to finish building this. Anyway, Ferraris are great up until a point. I need something bigger, so we are gonna look for a cheap truck. So I jumped on my computer and started to search the internet, hunting down a cheap and practical truck. Naturally, me being me, I started at the wrong end of the scale with this 132,000 pound Raptor. A little bit over budget, and as I narrowed that down slightly to 105,000, for this lovely Harley Davidson version F-150. It was still 100,000 over budget. And as I continued my search for a practical truck, this happened. My video sponsors, World of Warships, sent me a link to the game and I found myself engrossed, commanding my own battleship in this free to play PC game. With over 300 iconic, fully detailed warships, realistic weather, explosions galore, frequent events and more than 30 million players worldwide, I quickly started my campaign to dominate the world's oceans. So if you guys are feeling brave and are ready to take me on, download World of Warships now. And as a bonus, if you're a new player and you type in the code READYFORBATTLE2020, you'll win a whole host of extra freebies, which is 700 doubloons, 1 million credits, 7 days premium account, Premium ship USS Charlton with stars, stripes, camouflage, and the premium Japanese ship Isuzuchi. And that just might give you a chance to beat Ratarossa in battle. I'll put a link in the description below the video where you can download the game. In the process, you guys will be helping support this channel. So my thanks again to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Anyway, we must get back to work. I finally narrowed down my search to the Nissan Navara, or Frontier as it's known over in America. I needed something newer than 2011, which I'll go into a little later on, the reasons for that one. I also needed the double cab for the back seats uh, to transport the kids around. However, I soon discovered that these trucks for a 2011 uh, 2012 model are uh, up to £13,000, which is still way over my budget. So I continued searching. I think it's a good looking truck, uh, which, you know, they come with a few problems like any car. And uh, eventually, I actually found what I consider to be a potential bargain. Check this out. I've stumbled upon this one on Marketplace. It's a June. 2012 car, so it's the right year for me. It's a top of the range Tekken model, which comes with leather, sat nav, reverse cameras, lots and lots of extras. It's definitely been used. It's uh, not really being looked after. It's got a few dings in it, which is totally fine. I'm gonna be throwing bikes in the back of this car. But the best bit of this one is it's just 4,000 pound asking price. And even better than that, there is a slight problem with it. It's got half power, and I've negotiated the price down to just £3,000. Now, bearing in mind, some of these cars with lower mileage are going for £13,000. That's £10,000 less than those cars. Now, is this worth the gamble? Let's find out. At £3,000, of course it's worth a gamble. So I've handed over my hard-earned £3,000 and here is the car. So it's a 2012 Nissan Navara, 2.5 litre turbo diesel. Probably looks a lot better on video than it is in real life. 
So it's been used and properly abused this one, but I just needed a run around, something a little bit bigger than the, uh, the Peugeot, where I can put the kids in, throw the bikes in the back, not worry about it. A few little dents and uh, dings on the car really, really do not concern me. What does currently concern me is the state of the inside. So we'll go through that. So this is the state of the inside. That doesn't stay up. I don't think this car has ever been cleaned. Look at the state of all of this. Absolutely rotten. <laughs> like ridiculously bad everywhere. It needs an absolute, I don't even want to get in this car. Look how bad it is. So bad. So that is the, uh, that's the front or some of the front. Again, just look at the state of this. I have no idea how this car got so bad. Did it have a broken window? Look, we've got some glass down there. Maybe a window got broken, that's why it's just so bad. I don't want to touch anything. It's just minion. It's all broken, but it actually works. Look, just the knobs have come off it. Probably get some of them if I want to. Could do with some car mats. Just unbelievable. Look at this. <laughs> Should be wearing gloves and a biohazard suit for this. I'm not even kidding. So you might notice on this side, our little sidestep, our little running board missing. No idea where that uh, has got to. That's how it should look. So we'll just we'll just take any uh, thumbnail shots or anything like that on this side. Back here, we need the number plate lights. These are new number plate. Maybe I'll put one of my plates on here. Uh, got some wiring hanging down there. So a bit of electrical work today. Just need to make this car. Um, you know, safe for the road really. So I think all the uh, rear lights work here. Just gonna check all those out. We've got the reverse. We have got the indicators over there. We've got the fog there. So yeah, it seems to all work at the back there. Did check that out last night. Problem over here, headlight there, uh, fog light down the bottom. They need new bulbs or looking at. Now the biggest problem Navaras suffer from from uh, the first cars, I think it's 2005, through to 2015, which was the last version of this D40 model, is these, the chassis rails. Now, they are prone to rusting, cracking, and what you see is literally the back end of the car, just tear away, yeah, just, just fall, fall off there. See a big gap here to start with. So I've gone through the gaps, as far as I can see, it all looks okay. Um, the only real way of checking this is to stick a scope down on inside of the, uh, of the rails here. So we'll do that. Uh, but on first glance, having a good look around, I'm gonna have a little knock around with the hammer today. But they do feel okay, so uh, happy with that. That was a big deciding factor on buying this car. So I've come here to the uh, local breaker's yard just to show you. So here is a Navara. This is a, uh, what's this? This is a 2005. As you can see on this rear chassis, that is what's happened. There is um, some aftermarket upgrade here where you can buy them and you just weld on uh, strengthening plates. So we, We'll be doing that. They're only about 30 pounds. So we're going to be doing that. Engine wise, it's pretty dirty. It drives okay. We're lacking power, which is a common problem on these cars, uh, which I'm hoping is not the turbo. Uh, and uh, one of the tests we've done is when you squeeze this and have someone put uh, some power down on the car, it should for sure hands apart. I'm not getting that. So hopefully it's this actuator down here and not the turbo. Like the car was extremely cheap, so uh, if it is a turbo, then uh, that's part of it. Then once we've got this 
working properly as it should be, full power, and I'm happy with it. Uh, it's not gonna cost me too much money. We're gonna give it a good old service. We're gonna change all the oils out on it. We're gonna change all the filters, do all the brakes, and uh, yeah. I've looked at parts on it. I did all my research before buying it. Yeah, the parts on these cars are peanuts in comparison to my usual runarounds. Here's what I like about the car is everything works. <laughs> that, I mean, it's typical Nissan. Everything works on it. I've got the lack of power, which is a common problem. Like I say, I'm hoping that is uh, just a simple bit that's gonna cost me a few quid, less than a hundred pound, especially if I fit all these bits myself. Other than that, everything seems to work. I've got a few lights flashing on the dash, a bit like a Christmas tree, actually. Gradually, one by one, we'll sort those out. Um, but we've got nav on the car. We've got climate control. We've got electric seats. We've got electric windows all around. Everything works like that. All the back ones work. Uh, what else? We've got Bluetooth. We got all the toys on this car. Uh, we got electric folding mirrors, the lot. It all works, central locking, four wheel drive system, all of that works again. But uh, it just needs a damn good clean up in here. It is probably the most filthy car I've ever seen. So uh, I'm gonna go to town on this one, clean it all up. Uh, that's the first thing. Before I can really drive this, I do not want to drive it in its current state. So we're gonna clean it all up and then we are going to, uh, we're gonna start on the inside, which is unusual for me. I'd normally do the outside, but we are gonna do the inside today because it is so bad. And then we're gonna start on the outside and fix some of the uh, smaller problems. So we're gonna start off the interior cleanup operation. We're gonna put a mask on for this. It's so bad in there. We're gonna put gloves on and we're gonna give it a damn good scrub. So I've just moved the seats up, I've moved some of the panels, and you can see what the carpet should look like, and what it currently looks like, which is a, a little bit of a stark contrast. Filthy, we are giving it a really good scrub up though. Let's see how much we can get it back looking like this. So as you can see, I'm starting at the back of the car. This is just gonna go straight in the washing machine. Get rid of all of this. And then we'll get this, uh, we'll get this base bit out. Okay. And then we'll just clean this out of the car. There we go, one. Two, three. There we go. Gives us a bit more space. Next, it's coming along. So the carpet on well, this side's done. As you can see, the big contrast with that. It's getting a bit better. Then we're gonna do this door card. And then most of this stuff on this side is done. The seats are done up here. Done the uh, pillars. I need to do the ceiling. I'm gonna do the roof all in kind of one here, I think. Um, so yeah, let's just do this and then I can shut this side up and move over to the next side. Okay, so the back is looking a little bit better. So running out of time today, but we have taken out this uh, rear part of the center console. It is so filthy, it's easier to try and clean that inside. Same with the cup holder. So I'll show you inside the car. It's probably easier back here. We've got all of that out. We're gonna clean all the floor as well. Just, uh, oh, I keep finding money in this car. <laughs> it all helps. And then also, by taking that out, you see we can get to all this here. Same on that side over there. And uh, hopefully, just get to all the bits that we're really, uh, we need to get to so we can get all of this off. It's disgusting. I got my nets hanging up dry and they've been through the washing machine. Might have to go through again actually, look at that. Still a bit dirty, but, but yeah, looking good, looking good. They're almost dry actually. Just gonna 
to clean all this up here. It's very likely it's never been cleaned. Uh, I'm going to then take this part out. I'm going to strip as much as I can get out and then just clean all this up here. I just dis need to uh, disconnect the bits there and then uh, clean all that in the sink. All right, so we're back at my famous kitchen sink. We are going to clean this up here uh, because it's so much easier to do it in here than try and do that in the car and get all that rubbish out. That is just disgusting. So that is the plan. I've got a few bits to do. That, that, the massive console, which I'm not sure if we're going to get over here. This bit as well. So I'm going to give it all a good old scrub. One bit clean, that was the easy bit. Let's start with this. So this center console piece, I think we're just gonna have to be very careful with it. Otherwise I have to strip it all apart and uh, getting some of these uh, charger points out, stuff like that, it's quite difficult. So I'm just gonna clean it really carefully. And there we go, that is it. That's all cleaned up. Looking a little bit better in there. Nice and clean. This rubber trim here that seals really the body of the car from being exposed. There's just a huge gap down there to the gearbox. Uh, all of that had come apart. So there was a huge big space here. And I'm guessing that that must have let a lot of water, moisture. Uh, obviously we're in the winter months here in the UK. So it gets very cold overnight. And uh, you get a lot of condensation in the car. So another possible contributor to uh, all of the mold in this car. So I'm just sealing that. I've actually added a little bit of extra glue to it as well, just to make sure it seals right down. And then uh, just in the process of bolting that right down solid. So we've got a nice seal and hopefully no more moisture getting into the car. Taking off these side trims and clean these. All of this is just spilt food and drink that's molded. Same down here just disgusting so taking off the trims clean those up just found some more money i probably found couple of quid's worth of coins in this car. I should have kept them all in one place. In fact, I have. I'll put them all together and we'll find out how much I've saved just on coins. So, slight different to the door card here. Just give it a nice clean up. Not only does it look fresh, it smells fresh. There you go guys, slightly more habitable than it was before. No mold anywhere, nice and clean. I'm gonna do all the uh, door jams all the door shuts here uh, that's in part two which is going to be cleaning the outside of the car and even behind the seats at the back we've cleaned everything it's like brand new down there now very very happy with that we're even going to clean the toolkit so that's nice And the final stage for all the uh, leather on the car, it's got leather, this, so we are going to give it a nice little feed. 
which is probably something it hasn't had for a very, very long time, if ever. Well guys, I think you'll agree, the interior of this truck has been totally transformed. It is no longer the disgusting state it was in when we first got it. With a little bit of elbow grease, hardly any money spent at all, just some cleaning products. It is now a very pleasant environment to sit in. And I don't fear for my life catching something deadly from all of that muck that was in here. So now I can drive the car. Uh, we can move on to the next stage, which is uh, looking at uh, priority number one is the engine and the half power. Normally I'd do this the other way around, but it was just so bad in here. I just couldn't risk it. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at a whole host of other little small problems around the truck that made it very cheap in the first place. And I'm going to continue my quest to keep the costs right down and this truck a bargain truck. Anyway, join me in the next video. And uh, we'll continue that little uh, project. In the meantime, you can follow me over on Instagram for some daily updates on what I'm up to. And don't forget, download the PC game and I'll see you guys again very shortly. Thanks for watching and ciao for now.